All right, welcome back. This is Anton Math. And in this video, like I've done in some of the previous sections, I just wanted to do some worked examples. Um, for anybody who's taking this course at the time who um, wants some examples of homework type problems that a student would usually have if they're taking a, a pre-calculus 2 course. Um, now the first thing I want to, I kind of brushed over in the first video, uh, coterminal angles. So I just want to very quickly talk about how we would uh, calculate coterminal angles. Uh, let's say we're given an angle and it asks to calculate, I don't know, um, just three or four coterminal angles. Um, we'll do it both in degrees and radians. Uh, for example, let's say I have the angle 70 degrees. Okay, and I want to find coterminal angles. Coterminal with. Now in degrees, coterminal means that the terminal side of the angle is lying on top of the terminal side of another angle, right? Th those two angles would be coterminal. So in degrees, really all coterminal means is that they differ by an angular distance that is an increment of 360 degrees. So this is going to be coterminal with 70 degrees plus 360 degrees, right? So that's going to give us, uh, what, a 430? It's also coterminal with 70 degrees minus 360 degrees, isn't it? That's just moving around um, in the other direction from our standard position. Uh, so that would give me an angle of negative 290 degrees, etc. And we can add and subtract any um, increment of 360 degrees. Be careful though, if you look at 360 degrees minus 70 degrees, this isn't quite right, is it? This is positive 290 degrees, and that's that's not coterminal. So the order does matter. Whatever your angle is that you're trying to find something coterminal, just make sure you put that first before you add or subtract anything. Don't subtract the smaller number um, just because it's a smaller number. That's that's not going to be true. Now we can do this with radians as well. Um, the only difference, of course, being that if we're working with radians, let's look at I don't know, 2 pi over 3. Uh, we're not going to be adding 360 degrees, but we know that's we're just going to be adding 2 pi. We're we're much, we're very comfortable with this by now, right? So I can look at 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi, right? And this is just going to be 6 pi over 3, so that gives me a total of 8 pi over 3. Oops, 89, 8 pi over 3. Or I can subtract 2 pi. That's going to give me another coterminal angle, right? So this is minus 6 pi, so it's going to be a negative 4 pi over 3. Right, and you can just keep doing this. The problem might say find five coterminal angles. So you can just add 360 degrees repeatedly five times. You know, I could add 360 degrees up here to 430 and I'll get another coterminal angle. Or here I could add 2 pi to 8 pi over 3, I'll get another coterminal angle. So nothing too in depth. I just, uh, I felt like I kind of brushed over that in case anybody uh, needed some homework help with something along those lines. But now for the rest of this video, I'm going to focus on that uh, second video of this unit uh, dealing with these circles. So first, some common questions that you would see um, just with some circle diagrams on them. So this first one, find the arc length s. Now, I, I've made this example um, just like many books and tests, pre-calculus tests make examples. It's made to throw you off. I have 140 degrees here. So what I'm what I intuitively want to do is I want to convert this 140 degrees into radians, plug 5 and, a, and whatever the radian measure of this is into my arc length formula and get s. But you need to be very careful because look where my s is. My s is not the arc length subtended by 140 degrees. My s is the arc length subtended by this angle over here, this angle theta. right? And it doesn't write that out for you. It's not apparent. So first I need to know what theta is. Theta here is going to be 360 degrees minus 140 degrees, right? I know my entire interior angle measure is 360 degrees. 140 degrees are being taken up over here, so theta is just that difference, right? Now that, in turn, is equal to, uh, we get 220 degrees. Now, remember, before I use any formulas, right, over here I'm going to use the formula S equals R times theta. But before I use any formulas that have theta in it, the first thing I need to do is convert theta into radians. Very important. If I plug 220 into here, I'm going to get this huge number for s, and it's not going to be correct at all. Hmm, excuse me. So 
to convert from degrees to radians, I know that I take this 220. 220 degrees is the same thing as 220 times 1 degree, but I know that 1 degree is the same thing as pi radians over 180, isn't it? So we can ignore those zeros now. Those zeros will cancel. I get 22 pi over 18. And I can simplify that down even more to 11 pi over 9. So now coming over here, calculating out s, my radius of this circle is given in the problem is 5. And theta we just found to be 11 pi over 9. So my total arc length s is going to be 55 pi over 9. And that's it. We're done with that problem. Easy peasy. Now let's jump to this next one. Find theta and the area of the sector that it subtends. So that sector is going to be this sector right here, right? This is the sector we're going to find the area for. So first I need to find theta. And I can use my arc length formula to do that, right? I know that s equals r theta. And I have two of these pieces of information already. I have my s. My s is here at 10 meters. And I know my radius is given here as 5, so 10 is going to be equal to 5 theta from my arc length formula. So here we have that theta is equal to 2 radians. Okay, and so that's my theta. And the second part of the problem says find the area of the sector that it subtends. Now we found a new area formula in the last video, right? I know that my area is equal to 1 half, this is of a circular sector, it's equal to 1 half theta subtending that sector times the radius squared. Okay, so that's going to be 1 half. We just found my theta to be 2, so this 2 and 1 half cancel right away. And I'm left with r squared. My radius here is 5 squared. So that gives me a total of 25. And we have units, right? When we don't have units up here, we don't need to put units in our answer. But if we're given units, it's very important that we include them in our solution. So it's going to be 25 square meters, right? We know area is measured in squared units. All right, now jumping down to this last one, I want to find the radius r and again the area of this sector. Now the area of the sector, I wasn't very specific, I mean this sector up here. So again we can use our s equals r theta here. We're given two of the pieces of information and we can use those to find r. My s is 9. That's going to be equal to r times my theta, which is 3. And there's no unit of measurement here, right? We know that if there's no unit of measurement, that means radians, right? So 3 just means 3 radians. If it doesn't have a degree sign or if, it isn't, if there isn't anything telling you that you're using degrees, you can always assume that you're using radians. So here this gives me that my r is equal to 3, but not just 3, right? I know that my arc length is 9 inches, so my radius is going to be 3 inches. All right, so that's the first part of the problem. And the second part, we need to find the area of this sector. So we're going to be using the same formula. Area equals 1 half theta r squared. I was given my theta as 3. And we found my r to also be 3. So 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27. This gives me 27 over 2 square inches, isn't it? I know I'm dealing with inches and area is a squared unit, so that gives me squared inches. All right, that's done with these first three. These are uh, very common types of problems you'll see on homework or, or any kind of assignment like that. Now let me just do that. Now we're gonna, in these next two problems, I'm gonna get into the uh, circular motion. Circular motion problems can be a little bit more complicated. So let's take a look. This first one, a boy rotates a stone on a three foot long sling at the rate of 15 revolutions every 10 seconds. And we need to find the linear and angular velocities. Now we know that the linear velocity is just going to be whatever my angular velocity is times the radius. And the radius is given here, right? This three foot long sling, that's my radius, isn't, isn't it? You know, there's a little boy standing here. He's swinging this around his, his head in a circle. Very dangerous little boy. But the sling is three feet long. So that's my radius, right? The boy's at the center, even though I didn't draw it great. The boy's at the center of the circle. The sling is three feet. That's the radius of my circle. Now that stone is going around and around and around the circle. The total distance that the stone travels, that's going to be my linear velocity. 
and the total um, distance of rotation, that's going to be my angular velocity. So we'll start with angular first, so we can use our relationship to quickly get the linear afterwards. So my angular velocity, remember we denote this as omega, this is equal to uh, theta over t. Now theta is going to be the total angular distance traveled. Okay. So here I'm traveling uh, at a rate of 15 revolutions every 10 seconds. Now I know that one revolution is a distance of 2 pi radians and I'm doing 15 revolutions of 2 pi every 10 seconds. So th this my total angular measure so far is 2 pi per revolution times 15 revolutions all over 10. This is my time. So my unit of measurement here is going to be radians per second, isn't it? This radians is coming from this 2 pi, and the seconds coming from these 10 seconds. Now, of course, we can simplify this down. Um, 2 times 15 is 30, right? So we have 30 pi over 10, or in other words, just 3 pi radians per second. That's my angular velocity. Or in other words, he's doing one and a half revolutions every second, right? That's what 3 pi radians would be. Now my linear velocity, we know that we have this nifty formula that we f figured out. Um, just to remind you, I have v equals s over t, but we also know that that's the same thing as the radius times my angular velocity. So using this relationship, I can take my angular velocity, which was 3 pi radians per second, and multiply it by my radius. And we already found my um, radius to be 3 feet. This is going to be total to 9 pi feet per second. All right. So my linear velocity, in other words, the actual velocity or speed of the stone at the end of this sling, it's traveling 9 pi feet per second. Okay, so this is how you would do a problem like this. Um, now you can always use this s over t. There's nothing wrong with that. And just remember that this s equals r theta. But if we already have angular velocity, it's nifty to use uh, this relationship here. And if you start with linear velocity, remember you can always find the angular velocity just by dividing through by this r. The angular velocity is the linear velocity divided by the radius, right? We can use the relationship in both directions. Okay, let me clean up here for a second. I have one more problem for you. Uh, again, dealing with these uh, angular and linear speeds. And this is a problem that's going to help us with conversion. A lot of these problems are going to uh, need you to convert a lot uh, between different units of measurement. Okay, the problem reads, the wheels of a car have radius 11 inches and are rotating at 600 rotations per minute. Find the speed of the car in miles per hour. Now, the speed of the car, you know, if I have these wheels, right, they have radius 11 inches. And these wheels are rotating 600 times every minute. Now, as they rotate, they touch the ground here, right? So the speed of the car is going to be the same thing as the linear speed of the wheel, right? As this wheel turns and rolls along the ground, it's going to cover the same amount of distance as the linear distance of rotation that we've been talking about, right? So this is kind of a, a neat application problem on how you might be able to use this uh, information. So let's take a look. We're looking at linear speed. Now linear speed we know to be s over t, or in other words, the radius of the circle times the angular change over time. Okay. Now I know that the radius of my circle is given to me as 11 inches. My theta, or my uh, change in the angle over time, well I'm doing 600 rotations a minute. So I have 600 rotations a minute, and each rotation has an angular change of 2 pi radians, doesn't it? Now this is happening every one minute. That's my time. Every one minute. 
Okay. Now we need to do some conversions here. Let me rewrite this down to the left. I, so far we have that V equals, I'll leave this 11 inches alone. Uh, this 600 times 2, that gives me 1200 pi here over one minute. Now I need to do some conversions, right? Uh, before we plug this into our calculator and get a number, and remember every time we plug something into a calculator uh, we start approximating, right? Our, our answer gets a little bit less exact, so we want to have as little calculator as possible. We want to do all our conversions first. And by conversions I mean um, this problem, what, so far what we have is we're looking at how fast we're moving, how fast the car's moving in inches per minute. Now we need to change our unit from, of inches per minute into miles per hour. Okay, so for inches, first I'm going to go to, from inches to one foot. The way I'm going to do that, I, I have one foot is equal to 12 inches. Right, so I'm going to multiply by that. That's going to give me feet on top. On top is my uh, unit of distance. We need to keep that on top, and we need to keep the unit of time on the bottom. So here, really, I'm just multiplying by one, aren't I? One foot and 12 inches, that's the same thing when we're talking about a unit of distance, but this is going to convert my inches, basically dividing this top part out by 12 inches to give me um, how many feet that I have. Now, I don't need feet, I need miles, so I'm going to need to multiply again by one mile, over, now this is going to be how many feet are there in a mile, right? It's 5,280. Right, we have 5,280 feet in a mile, right? So you can kind of think of it as I'm canceling this inch with this inch, this foot with this foot, and I'm left with miles on the top. Now the last thing that I need to multiply to convert with is right now, this is, if I, if I pl plug all this into my calculator, what I'm going to get is how many miles I'm traveling per minute but that's not quite there yet, right? We need it in hours. So, I'm going to put 60 minutes over one hour, right? I need my unit of time to be on the bottom, so you can think of this minutes as canceling with this minutes, and I'm left with now with hours at the bottom. So we're doing all of these conversions, okay? So let's try to simplify this down if we can. Uh, this 12 here kind of cancels with this 12, makes it 100 pi, right? So this is going to be 1100 pi here. So we have that my velocity is 1100 pi. And I still have a 60 up here, so times 60 all over. And the only thing I'm only number I'm left with on the bottom is 5280, isn't it? 5280. And all of these um, measurements cancel out, right? We design these to all cancel out with each other except for miles and hours. So this is miles per hour, right? And we're pretty much done. All that's left here, if we want to get an exact measurement, and of course we could simplify this on paper, but we're at our last step, so it would be okay to go ahead and plug this into your calculator. And if you do plug it into your calculator, um, that helps us to get rid of the pi, right? We don't want it in terms of pi, we want the total miles. Um, once you plug it into your calculator, you'll get something about equal to 39.27 miles per hour. So this is kind of cool. We just calculated out how fast a car is going just based on the radius of the wheel and how many times that wheel is turning every minute. And we got it all the way down to how many miles per hour the car is moving. Well, I hope that this video was helpful with your homework and assignments, and we'll see you in the next section.